happy once again to have Dennis McLean with us. And uh, Denny, uh, thanks again for coming. It's been real appreciative of your your willingness to come here and spend hours signing autographs. Well, these are good folks. We've always had a good time up here. Uh, Ty and and the families have just been great people up here. And it's uh, and Stubby, of course, I played with, or he was my pitching coach at one time. So. Uh, you know, it's just a nice, it's a nice afternoon. I mean, everybody is great. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about baseball. But first off, you know, back in 1968, of course, it was a great year for all of us Tiger fans, and especially you. And uh, won 31 ball games. I think I think you, you pitched 33 complete games that year, right? No, I wish it was 33, but I think it was 28. 28. But we are never going to see that again, are we? It's a different game. The game is uh, constructed now around uh, a relief pitcher. Uh, I mean, the game, the, the focus of the game now is a relief pitcher in every ball game. So I think the toughest job in the world is our manager has to come out every night and decide what four pitchers he's going to use first because four is not normally enough. Uh, and then they got to focus on what how they're going to finish the ball game. So uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how the game got to this point, where it got and why it did. Uh, I suppose you can blame a lot of this on Sparky Anderson when he was in Cincinnati in the the year of the big red machine won their championship the first time they didn't have a complete game and all of a sudden everybody said oh boy we can all do that well not everybody can do that as there's a lot of teams that don't win every year uh and i don't know they're talking about right now raising the mound again uh which is a thing that destroyed a lot of us uh in 69 once they reduced the mound um if they do that that'll give the pitchers a little bit more stamina it'll give them a little bit more strength it'll certainly give them some more bearing uh, on top of a higher mound, and I think you'll see fewer and fewer injuries again, too, uh, because we didn't have the, you know, um, we all had arm props. Everybody had an arm prop. You're going to throw a ball overhand with any velocity. You're going to have a sore arm. But but the, the good part was you had all that leverage all the time, you know, on a 16-inch mound and made all the difference in the world. But today, you know, unless they do something about it, you're going to continue to see these pitchers struggle and have a lot Well, of course, in a, the lower mound helps the hitters, too, immensely. Well, of course it does. I mean, it takes away a lot of leverage. I mean, listen, uh, the greatest example is uh, in 68, when the mound was 16 inches high, I think I struck out 280. Uh, the next year, when they reduced the mound by 6 inches, I only struck out 100, 180 guys, 100 less. Uh, so, you know, if that doesn't say something about the leverage that we lost, uh, nothing does. And by the way, over the next five or six years, most of this, uh, most of the uh, alleged stars in Major League Baseball uh, in the two leagues, American League and National, were out of the game or hurt in a very serious way and never recovered. So uh, lowering the mound really did a lot of damage. Now you talked about your having a sore arm and pitching with pain. Well, sure, you had a pitch with pain then. We didn't have free agency, not, not like they know today. We finally went out on strike in 72, and uh, we held out to, to get our union in place, which, of course, everybody's tried to mimic. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is if we don't walk out in 72, who knows where, where we would be today. I, I think we'd have free agency, but I don't think we'd have the extreme free agency that's available today. I'm not sure if we would have the television money and the sports money that we have today either. There would have been a great improvement, don't misunderstand, but I don't think you would have seen a guy like, with all due respect to Verlander, who's got a great arm, I don't think you would wind up giving him uh, 45 or $50 million uh, for, he didn't win 20 yet. I mean, he's in four years of pitching, or four, he's only had four or five complete games. Uh, but we who played the game uh, don't quite understand the, the, the thought process that goes in to give a guy that kind of – and I listen, I'm for the players. I hope, they get, I hope they give everybody $100 million. But it's hard to realize that you can give somebody, you know, 50 or $60 million with five complete games. I, I, I just can't fathom. And yet, and yet they argue about pension increases for the older guys. That's what really gets me. The greed – and the selfishness is beyond control. What's what's the highest you were paid in any single year? Well, my entire career, almost 10 years, was only $440,000. That was over 10 years. That's a signing bonus now. Hell, that's, uh, I think the major league minimum today is about 400000 I mean, when I broke into the major leagues, the minimum was $7,500 a year. I mean, I made that my first year, uh, $7,500. My second year, I think I made 15000 
One of the things I think I've noticed, which has been a disadvantage to the pitchers, is the strike zone. I don't think the strike zone is anywhere near where it should be. They've made it so small that it's uh, you've got to almost groove the pitches. I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. There's some. You know, listen, the umpires have always been uh, inconsistent, uh, whether it's the 60s, 50s, 40s, or, or the 2000s. Um, I don't think that's the issue. I think because baseball has so many more teams, the, the flatness of the mound also, uh, there's so much less talent in the game today that you could call real major league pitchers. Look at every major league staff and see how many pitchers actually have a winning career record. Better yet, uh, they don't. They don't want to say this or really put a lot of thought into this. Look at the ERAs. If a guy's ERA is four or worse, come on. I mean, who are they trying to fool? I mean, they've got a mediocre pitcher in the major leagues, but there's a lot of mediocrity. I mean, even even and I'm not picking on him. We're just sitting. We got. We, we can identify with Verlander. Look at his ERA career wise. I think it's right at four, just under four. Um, you know, I'm not sure what that says about the consistency. And, and of course, uh, Justin's got a bad habit. He loses his concentration in, in half of the ball games he pitches, and all of a sudden gives up a four run or a five run spot in the middle of a ball game. Um, he hasn't learned how to pitch. He could be a great one if somebody teaches him how to pitch. Because right now, he is mentally still challenged when it comes to pitching with a lead. Toughest thing in the world is to pitch with a lead. Whether it's one run or ten runs, it's the toughest thing in the world. I think the year that, in 1968, I think your ERA was under three, wasn't it? I think it was under two. I wish you'd get your statistics right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Back in <a> second. <laughs> You know, the Tigers have made uh, several moves uh, over the, over the uh, winter time, uh, giving up a gold glove second baseman, a gold glove uh, center fielder. Uh, how do you feel about those changes? Well, I, I don't know if uh, we're talking about, uh, what's his name, the, the center fielder? Um, Granderson. Granderson. I don't know if he won a golden glove yet. I mean, he's a pretty good player. Don't misunderstand me. But they didn't hurt themselves with that trade. Not at all. Uh, he, he can't hit a left-hander if you told him it, it was coming. Um, he is a great kid for the community. No matter where he goes, he's going to be a real community-oriented kid. He grew up in the south side of Chicago where we grew up. And, you know, we, we grow up in that theme of, of helping people. We all went to Catholic schools. And you know what? You know, it's... You go to Mass in the morning, you take communion, you go to confession on Saturday. I mean, that stays with all of us. Uh, and he's done a great job with that. But we're going to get Johnny Damon. And Johnny Damon is going to make this club some kind of a winner. Now, I'm not saying you think that's a sure thing? Absolutely, I think it's a sure thing. I think Damon wants to come here in the worst way because there's $14 million on the table. I think that's his number one reason. Number two, with all of the negativeness and the criticism that he's getting coming to this town, I mean, you should hear the, the, the rhetoric in, on the radio in Detroit. It's like this guy is Attila the Hun. I mean, all this guy has ever done is win. That's all. I don't care if he's 37, 47, or 27. I want a guy on this ball club right now because of all of the questions that has won in the past. Johnny Damon won't hurt him. So he can't throw the ball the way he did at one time from the outfield. He can throw the ball that will cut off man and let the shortstop handle the play from there. Damon can play the game. He can still run, and he'll do more for you than most guys on this ball club. Now we're going to have a new setup man and a new closer. Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, I'm not sure if you've got either one of them yet. Um, you know, it, remains I, to be seen. It, it sure remains to be seen. On top of that, you've got, uh, uh, you know, you've got some real dead weight on this team. You got Bonderman, who should not be in the big. I mean, they got sooner or later they got to cut the rope with him and let him go. Uh, Willis, they're going to have to let go sooner or later, and, and, and that's just too bad because this kid is healthy and he's just mentally impaired somehow uh, when he when he reaches the mound. Part of his problem is he's got so much motion going on all the time. You know, you, yeah. it's tough to throw strike consistently when you got all that movement. And then, of course, the other guy is um, Zamaya. I mean. I mean, it's it's like watching a bucket of bricks fall every time he throws the ball, and and he gets hurt every year. So how sensitive are you to trying to get rid of him? Listen, by the way, Nate Robertson's another one. You got five guys that, that really should you should really not have in your ball club right now. Very inconsistent, right? But if you're going to go with those four or five guys, you might as well bring up five guys from the minor leagues and let them get some experience because you know these guys can't pitch. You know these guys can't win. Why do you stay with it? I mean, and I admire the Tigers a little bit for going out and they're going to eventually sign this Johnny Damon. And they've done some other things. But, um, you know, they're, they're, they're really weak up the middle right now. And, um, you know, you got a third baseman that only hits 230.
got a shortstop you're not sure of. Uh, the only guy you know that's going to go out there and, and pound the ball right now is the guy at first base. He's, he is a born superstar hitter. Uh, and then if you got him and Damon in the same lineup, I think you got a little bit of chance. But if this pitching doesn't come around, namely if Verlander doesn't have a good year, and uh, this kid who they won't let throw more than 100 pitches, I can't think of his name right offhand, but, man, if they don't let this kid learn how to pitch, they're making a horrible mistake. Well, what do you, where do you think they'll – heck is his name? Porcello, yeah, Porcello. Where, where, where do you think they'll end up in the Central this year? Well, I think they're going to wind up in the Central Division. You think so? Yeah, in the Central Division. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I you got know, that. Listen, I think, I think uh, they've got a long, hard road this year. I think uh, Minnesota, again, has improved themselves. Uh, Minnesota, although, see, you got a big test in Minnesota this year. They're in a new ballpark. Yeah. They're not in this little bandbox that they've been in for years that they built their team around. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Although, you know, they got they got two of the greatest superstars, two quietest superstars in baseball, that Morneau and uh, Maurer. And thank you very much. Don't you go away. And uh, those two guys are the best two superstars in baseball today because they know how to play. They keep their mouth shut, and all they do is show up every day and produce. I think we ought to have him do the interview. I think you should do the interview. <laughs> so I think he could be the guest. <laughs> well, Denny, once again, thank you for being here. It's uh, really a pleasure to meet you. And uh, I, I saw you signing autographs and thanking people for coming. Well, yeah, listen, they're coming out. They're spending their money for the school, and, and, uh, and, and you can't do anything better than help a school. Well, thank you very much. It's always good to have to do an interview with somebody older than me. I am. I know. <laughs> okay, that's it for today with Denny McClay. Later, Ty, after we saw the clinic you did the other last week, now we've had a big day today with uh, uh, Denny McLean here and Rick Kruger. Had a nice interview with both of them, and uh, really appreciative of those coming here to Lee School. Um, it's awesome that Rick would come over here. He's a former Rebel and do that. But really, you know, um, not to sort of change what Rick's doing today, but Denny was has been the key. The first year we did this auction, he donated. Um, piston tickets, bats, things, just to get it going. He jump-started it, and he's just been a super blessing to Lee Baseball, his wife, and, you know, they, they, they get nothing for this. They're spending their whole day here with us, and he goes out, and that's what he does for a living, is he goes out and um, does autographs. I mean, that's part of his income, and he sacrifices a whole day for our kids, and that's just super kind of him. So what goes on from here now after this uh, today? You're back into a routine of uh, their Saturday program? Well, we, we'll have our auction tonight, which is another four hours here. But, um, yes, we'll be back on our um, we'll be back on our high school routine. High school baseball is coming up, but we'll do our kid um, clinics again coming up. And then, you know, it's, we're getting pretty close to high school baseball, so that's about done. Are you going to take a spring trip this year? Oh, yeah, we'll go to Georgetown, Kentucky, like we have now for, I think it'll be our fifth year. Okay. And well, we, we just love going there. And um, just, I got to remember to thank, we got – a few school board members here, Tammy Schaefer, who's been just a trooper on this, uh, Will Sheldon, who's just been awesome helper, uh, Denny Grindike's been here all day, and he doesn't have a boy playing in the program, his daughters that play softball, and they're so supportive of what we're trying to do, our field, the building we're putting up, for every dollar we're getting, we're getting five dollars back in just donations and uh, materials, it's just been a it's been an awesome thing. It's just a, a great um, come together, feel good thing. I think a lot of people enjoy doing something. We had one couple come from Holland today with a, a baseball glove. They brought it all the way from Holland to get it signed to donate it to our auction. I just think that is so cool. It's such a cool spirit. I almost teared up because that's so neat. You guys come out here, Doug and um, Gary and um, Phil and Ray. It's awesome. You guys take time out of your Saturdays to come put it in the. Our kids. You're a super organizer, I'll tell you that. When I walked in that door today, I was I was awed. Well, it's um, like I said, the, the key is over there. Um, finishing, still signing stuff as he walks out the door. And um, they have been uh, just a super blessing. And um, I, uh, I'm just grateful to call my friend. Thanks, Ty. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for, for WKTV, and we'll be back another time. <laughs> <laughs>